Hello everyone. Welcome to Tapping Your Creativity in my studio today. We have um, my incredible friend, colleague, and artist, uh, Maria Burtis. She has been an inspiration in my life and I'm sure it will be on yours too. You'll see why she's going to join us in a minute. And um, Maria and I, there she is. Hi. Sandra, you know it's Mariah. Mariah, I'm so sorry. Why am I keeping... I, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. Um, it's everybody makes a mistake when they... I know. I know. Yeah. I, I know. know. And you're, you're, a, you're a native speaker of Spanish, so of course you think it's Maria. <laughs> in your head. Yeah. No, in my head. I don't know what's going on in my head. I've been working too much, I think. In all yeah. good things, though. Yeah. <laughs> so this is amazing. Um, welcome, Mariah. I'm so excited to have you today. You're you're my friend, my colleague, my dear artist um, that lives in San Francisco, and um, and you will tell us all about who you are and um, where you're from and where you work. But before we go there, I just yeah. want to say um, I honor our relationship. As friends, as colleagues, you've always been so transparent with me, sharing all your knowledge, your incredible knowledge, and you are truly an inspiration to myself, to my work, um, and you will be to so many today, too. So I can't wait um, for you to show us everything you have to show us today. So um, you're so sweet, Sandra. Thank you so much for doing this. And this is such a cool thing that you're doing. And so many fabulous artists and so many great visits and studios and spaces. And um, I have not been able to catch them all live, but I've been catching up on YouTube. And it's so fun to see what people are doing. And um, you're really, it's, this is such a great project. So thank you for doing it. And thank you for asking me to be part of it. Yes. Um, I I want to say one thing to start, which is I have to say thank you to my daughter, Eloise, who's filming me right now. So I'm not having to do the whole, you know, selfie weird thing. Um, Hi, so I Eloise. Thank you so much for helping us out, honey. We really appreciate Hi. it. Yeah. Um, and some of you watching may know Eloise. So anyway, and you know what a great helper she is. So I'm very happy about that. Um, yes. So anyway. Um, so please so tell us. Sure. Again, um, do you, now that in San Francisco, we know it's a hot zone there. So are you yeah. being able to come into your studio and work? Are you have to work at home? What is your situation right now? So well, we're lucky because we got on top of the situation early in San Francisco. Like we sheltered in place. We're one of the first cities to do it. And, um, and so we, we don't have that many cases. And um, it seems like the, we're definitely flattening the curve. Uh, that said, we are still really careful. So Eloise and I drove to the studio this morning. <clears throat> I can enter safely. I'm in my own space. Um, we have a communal sink and bathroom, but I just try not to use it while I'm here. I mean, the sink, I can wear gloves. We wear a mask when we're out in the, hall, out in the um, hallway in passing. So it, it, it's actually worked out fine for us to be able to be in here, although there are not very many people here. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are working at home. They just yeah. are not, you know, feeling it. So, um, and I will say it took me maybe a good four weeks to actually be able to get in here and start to kind of get anything done. Like I would come in and I would sort right. of wander around yeah. and like look at things and touch everything. And then like my phone would blow up and I would get distracted. And so it's really, it's taken a while before I feel like I've settled into this new normal um and so i feel like i'm just starting to hit my stride a little bit after quite a period of transition i think it's I been i think it's been a, a common thread through us all it's yes. been really hard to get in a rhythm um yeah. just to find that rhythm and to start you know um sparking your creativity even though that it comes almost like a second nature to us but i think that what we're living right now it's so weird i guess yeah. That we are just, yeah. you know, we're not in our same um, places mentally and right. physically. And so it's right. been super challenging. But I think that, yeah. you know, by doing this interviews, mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, we can spark um, someone who's sitting in the couch and say, you know what, I can do this too. And, and yeah. um, I yeah. can be creative. And so let's go into your artwork and show us your beautiful um, sure. pieces that you have behind you right now. And what I'm just okay. going to say is I'm going to, well, for now, I'm going to keep the comments 
but I'm gonna, as soon as we start coming into seeing your work, I'm just gonna pause them for a little bit so they don't, we're not distracted by them. Okay, so in other words, in the feed, they won't be showing up so you can see what's on the screen. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, and I think okay. I, you know, at the end, I'll have like 10 minutes or so for our, you know, questions and comments yeah. and all that stuff. But for right now, I think I'm just gonna turn them off. So, um, so I'll turn them on as soon as, as we're done with this. So, okay. okay. Well, me, I'll just start and just say that um, I have been painting for 26 years now um, and um, pretty consistently during that time, although there have been periods where, you know, when you have tiny children where it's a little, well, it can be hard. Um, and I went to art school in Massachusetts and I studied a pretty traditional curriculum of painting in oil, drawing the figure, um, doing a lot of still life, a lot of observational painting. And it taught me a lot about materials and technique and, um, and sort of mastery of the actual, you know, uh, the tools and the materials. Um, right. It went about five years after that, after I started art school, I, we moved to San Francisco and I was in a situation where I needed to, have, we were, you know, we were so poor, just out of graduate school, you know, uh, kids married and, right. um, and, uh, and I couldn't afford to rent a studio. I mean, this was the top of the dot com, you know, bubble. And so we were, um, I just worked, I, I found a class, a, a continuing education class through Berkeley. Um, and I would go to, and the, it was in San Francisco, but I would go and I would paint once a week on Fridays, um, and I and the rest of the time I was working at a tiny little desk in my in our tiny little one bedroom apartment, and um, the 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 painting class I took was a um, acrylic class, and I tried to pick the most open ended thing, thinking I'll just go, I'll use acrylic, I'll, I'll but I don't want to, you know, I've just been to art school, I don't need a lot of instruction and all. Right, that. right. I just want a space to make a mess, and so I went, and the the instructor was a woman named Lee Himes who um, died several years ago in her 90s. Um, and she was a tremendous inspiration to a whole generation of artists here in San Francisco. And I was opened up to her whole world of teaching and her style of kind of, um, her main thing was trying to get people unblocked. And so what, what were the impediments? What are the things that And we'll talk people? about her shortly when you show us um, yeah. a few surprises that we have. So um, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so um, so since then, I've just been working. I worked at home. I worked in my garage for many years. And then I had a studio south in San Francisco. And now I'm up in Sausalito in Marin County. So I get to cross the Golden Gate Bridge every day, which is so beautiful and inspiring. Um, and I'm in a great building of, like, amazing artists. There are so many wonderful painters and sculptors and people doing everything here. And so it's a really fertile environment and it's pretty collaborative. It, it really helps to be surrounded by yeah. a community of artists. I'm at, yeah. um, in Minneapolis, I'm in the Casket Arts building and yeah. it is full of studios with amazing artists and jewelers and photographers and just, you know, it just, the energy is amazing. Yeah. And if yeah. you make it to Minneapolis, you have to visit Sandra and her studio because it's incredible. I went and saw it. I don't know, what was it, maybe four years ago or something? I think was, so, yeah. It's, yeah. I'm in very, summer, very lucky to have the beautiful. studio that I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. So, um, so anyway. So let's so, talk a little bit about what you have behind you. Sure. So this painting, um, so my, um, my work is, I mean, I work in a variety of different sizes, um, but the work that I, you know, wind up kind of selling through galleries and art consultants and things like that is usually large scale, abstract um, and I just picked two examples. I can only have two paintings um, up right now on this wall. This wall is 20 feet. Well, actually I have a third painting. This is a commission over here. But this um, this painting is um, just a large sort of kind of, kind of a floor. And you can see the scale next to you, you know? You yeah. can really see the scale, you know. It's nine inches across and it's about 60 inches tall. Um, yeah. so in wow. feed by whatever. Um, and is um, it mixed media or, or mainly acrylic? Mainly acrylic, but there's a lot, I do, there are a lot of drawing materials in here. So I use, um, uh, these, uh, things called chalk markers here, a, a lot of, um, graphite, water soluble graphite. Um, this piece doesn't have any collage in it, but the, um, I often do put collage in my paintings or I'm starting to more and more just little sections. Um, 
I love yes. the palette on that. It's so fresh and beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so anyway, and this is, you know, for me, a painting is like a transfer of energy. Um, and so this has the energy of sort of this like kind of fresh all at once, um, sort of uh, there's a feeling of atmosphere, wind, maybe kind of like you're, I don't know, in the spring when the petals are falling from the sky. But it's it not feels like to... almost dancing petals there. It feels yes. like a, like a right. dancing, <laughs> like a dancing yeah. painting to me, a yeah. lot of movement. Yeah, but it's not it's not meant to be my work is does not reference like a particular place or a particular um, thing. For me, it's more about creating evoking a feeling. Um, I recently I do these daily paintings and put them on Instagram. And um, just yesterday, someone made the most wonderful comment. And they said, you know, oh, I, can, I, I, I know exactly where I am. I feel that I'm the top of a hill and I'm running down into the, you know, ocean or whatever. And it was just <laughs> wonderful like that. It was just wonderful that that evoked such a response in the person. So I'm right, always right. interested in- Because you probably weren't even thinking of that. No, I just made, I just made the painting. And, yeah, and, and we're going to go see these, those daily yeah. paintings. So, yeah. So, um, so anyway, okay, so this is more of a kind of a botanical feel. Now we'll, we'll move over here. Thank you, Eloise, for helping me out. Um, and this is more of like a kind of an overall sort of slightly more, um, necessarily architectural, although sometimes my paintings like this have more geometric shapes. This is more about kind of an overall landscape feel and atmosphere. So one is it the same scale as the one that we just saw? Yeah, it looks like about, it. Yeah, maybe 58 inches by maybe 95, something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. I yeah. started on a canvas and then, um, which I don't always do, but sometimes I do. And um, so they, they wind up being kind of odd sizes after that. I just yes. paint because I feel yes. like painting. Yes. Um, and, and these, this has um, again a lot more of the drawing in it. And um, so here you can see I've used the Lyra graphite, water soluble graphite, um, and some pencil. Um, again, more of these uh, chalk markers are in here that I'll show you later. Um, and then just a lot of layering, you know, drips and obscuring. You know, um, this is very, very thin paint on top of pretty thick paint. Um, on top of a lot of other, you know, layers. If you were to go back and take a photograph, there's no way I could kind of reverse engineer this. I mean, it's all just sort of call and response. Um, and it also looks like you use uh, many different brushes and the brush yes. strokes, uh, yeah. you can tell yes. that yes. they're, you yeah. know, it's really all different important. sizes. Yeah, it's really important um, to use all different kinds of tools um, and also to use, to change your hand sometimes. Um, right. I do, right. when I need to make a mark, like something like this, for example, um, I will yes. off, back up, turn around, walk forward, close my eyes, and make the mark like from here, from my gut, rather than looking at it and reacting to it in real time, because my editor is so finely tuned that I'll wind up making it not as interesting. I'll make it too right. slick or too cute or too perfect or something, or I'll think, oh, wait, I don't want to do that. Whereas if I can record like an, like an energetic thing, you get something really much more interesting. And sometimes it's kind of clunky and weird, but then you think, oh, actually that's cool. Cause I never would have made that. If my and it's almost were... like that gut feeling that we get yeah. that we always talk about and having that sixth sense of just going yeah. for it and not really thinking too much, um, right. you know, right. while you're doing it, cause uh, yeah. the result can be just so um, natural and, um, and, instant and so yeah. uh, also, you can't the, reproduce the, that instant yeah. you know what you just did you just can't do it you know no no and and you shouldn't and, and that's amazing right that you right. can't reproduce. right because that, right. it's unique it's actually a record of your presence and that is the most that's what i'm going for in the painting is like I want to be as present as possible while I'm making it, which is actually getting back to the whole like COVID shutdown situation. One of the things that was so hard about coming in here was that I felt I was so distracted by just the generalized anxiety and like fear and like my phone and everything that I couldn't get to that place where I, where everything just falls away and you're sort of just operating from um, that really honest place that's kind of nonverbal and just about being right here right now and not yeah, but anywhere. you know what I have found Mariah I think yeah. that when you even if you don't paint if you just sit in your chair where you can see 
art materials yeah. or organize or just like yeah. sit in a space where it's actually yeah. engaging and that you can really understand that you are creator you can right. create and yes. maybe that's not yeah. the day you know that you're creating but you're sitting in a in a place where you're you know where your imagination starts to go and maybe you want to write something that day or you just want to you know yeah. do a little doodling or whatever whatever that is that you make that day count it as a productive yes. day right right i think brene brown says like the two mile walk you do take is better than the five mile run you don't take and i feel the same way about art like the 15 minute doodling session or just you know, playing with materials or organizing your space is better right. than the four hour session you don't go to because you're like, oh, I don't have four hours to paint. Right, to exactly. Why get started, exactly. right? It's, exactly. it's an aggregate. It's an aggregate. Yeah. And, yeah. and I will say that one way I've gotten back to feeling more like the channel is open was just by working. I mean, yeah. so maybe I was distracted. I worked anyway. You know what I mean? Right. I just exactly. Go, oh, exactly. Even if I could only exactly. come in for 15 minutes and you, and you actually, know, that will be a segue to sh for you to show yeah. us um, the next so, thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. So this piece, um, I have to give props to Jane Kenyon for those of you who know her, because I was in North Carolina. At the Jane stage. was my very first yeah. um, brave artist. So thank you, Jane Kenyon, to, for like spirit, like literally like getting this started for us. So no, yeah, no, she's so great. And she is such a fearless artist. And one of the things she did while she was there was she had um, pieces of paper and she was just making different little drawings on the paper um, and and just covering the paper. And I looked at it and I thought, that's like a dictionary or like a, a, a yeah, like a dictionary of her mark making. You know, it's so interesting. Um, I'm seeing, you know, what, what it looks like when she uses a fat brush and when she uses a skinny pencil and all of it was in black and white. And so you were really able to see the differences in all of these little vignettes that she put on right. this one piece of paper. Right. And so I started this actually in North Carolina. I think some people who were there saw it. And um, I just started thinking like, okay, well, I'm going to start cataloging all of the different things I kind of know how to do, which I mean, not even know how to do, but like, you know, here's a strip of a, of a collage that has tissue paper and paint. And then it's got some, you know, it's got some graphite. And here are some of these um, acrylic markers. And this is a big piece of the Lyra um, I mean, a big, you know, scrawl of the Lyra, yeah. that water soluble graphite. This is um, that bleeding tissue paper, which, um, and again, I, Sandra, I sent you a bunch of links for all of these different Yeah, products. we'll have, well, I'll post so, all so the want to know yeah, suggested about materials that you're using. using. Yes. yes. Great. Um, and then things like what happens when you paint and then you draw into it with a, you know, while it's still wet, you know, moving it around or... What about um, uh, taking just a computer printout and you know, drawing over the letters and see if you can get some sort of interesting pattern? Or right. um, this is a piece of my palette. Um, so I just cut it out and I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting composition. You know, maybe that. So I just started putting these things together. Um, so it gives you information for yeah. your actual pieces. It's a yes, great exactly. way to spark yeah. your, you know, it's like a dictionary, like a board of, right. you know. And it doesn't, if this is not a finished piece of work necessarily. I mean, maybe some would argue that it is. For me, it's like, I don't have to, I'm not worried like, oh, how does it look? Because it's just, oh, well, there's this and there's this and there's this. And it, that's kind of interesting how they're all interacting. And, and as you said, like if I'm working on a painting like this and I get someplace and I think I need something here, then I could look over here and say like, oh, well, what about, you know, what about using the edge of the rubber shaper with the blue, you know, with some color of paint and dragging a little something here? Or what about if I did do a little bit of layer of tissue with um, water over it and dragged it into the next, you know? So it just, it's kind of a helpful. Um, yeah, color. I think it's very interesting. I think um, this will really help every one of us to have some sort of, you know, something that you really love on your paintings and kind of just have a reference to go back to yeah. and say, hey, that was yeah. really successful on my painting. How do I transfer that into the new one? So it's a good reference to yeah. have. It's also a place where if you're, if you, if I, I don't do, I don't worry so much about like putting something on my painting and like, is it going to wreck the painting? Because I feel like you can always just, um, you know, paint over it or right. get rid exactly. of it. Exactly. But if you're not at a point in your painting, yeah. if you're at a point where you are 
like feel, starting to feel that tentative thing. If you have something like this, you can be like, well, let me try it over here and say like, oh, okay, wait a second. Now that actually sort of feels, you know, that feels energetically good. Maybe I, now I have the courage to go and do it on the, on the more finished paint. Right, or something. right. So, yeah. So now um, let's, uh, yeah, let's continue. Okay, so should we go over and talk about the dailies or do you yes, want to see the box? Yes, uh, Let's go to the dailies first and then we'll dailies. do, okay. um, yeah. Okay. All right. Eloise, follow me over here. Um, <laughs> so I try to replicate my, uh, my situation at home as much as possible. So Eloise, why don't you just look down at here? So, um, so I've been doing these for uh, almost, I guess it's 14 years now. Today was day 5,347 um, in a row. And if you had told me when I started that I was going to do this for you know, 14 years every day, I would have said, you're crazy. And I would have gone back to bed. I mean, but it's really, um, honestly, it's just this, I just take a 16th of a sheet of Lennox 100 paper. Again, um, Sandra will have this information in the, you know, later. Um, and I, um, and I sit at my kitchen counter and this is my box that I use at home. Um, and usually it's just like, I cleaned it up a little bit, but usually it's just, you know, like a mess. Like I can just put it out on the counter and I have a sheet of this um, Dick Blick palette paper. I take a piece and then I open my box. Now this box um, is, you can see, um, I have, this is a miniature version of what I use in the studio, but I have every color I need to mix here and it's all available. So I don't have to squeeze out a palette every day when I'm doing these daily paintings. And um, so we will talk about the boxes in a minute when we move to your materials, because right. um, you right. were my inspiration, but we'll give um, the credit what credit is due um, yes, when we move to that. Yeah. So keep going with your dailies, because it's so interesting yeah. that you've been doing it for 14 years every single day. I am in such awe to even well, now think of stop, doing right? something yeah. like that every single it's day. It's like brushing my teeth. Okay, so this was this morning, you know, I did it at like six in the morning or whatever, you know, when I got up or 6.30 and had my coffee and yes. sat at my, yes. you know, it's, yes. and then this was the day before. Yes. Um, and, you know, we can, you know, and the, and the day before that, this was a vertical. Yes. Um, and then this one has a little bit of collage in it. So I sometimes use collage. Um, they're unbelievable. They really are. They're... Each one of them are like, just breathtakingly well, beautiful. Well, what's fun about it is that like, I, I can just, it's like so low risk, right? So I can make, I can make something that feels, I might not be inclined to come in and do a, you know, a nine foot painting with this subject matter, but right. this is what I felt like making this morning, you know? And it's all very spontaneous. Like I start by, I make a mark, I make another mark, I make a next mark, and then I'm just into like moving the color around, moving the feeling around, um, you know, uh, getting in there. I have all these drawing materials just available. Um, I use like a, this kind of rubber, you know, shaper type thing. I have another one here. Um, and, and it's just easy. I literally open the box, open the box, boom. I'm, I'm working in less than I mean, 30 seconds. You know, I just have to get a cup of water and some, paper towels. And are I'm you going to show us now or are you going to show us later? I can, yeah, I, can, I mean, I did one today already, but I can just give you an example. So, yeah, you know, I, might, great. I might decide to start, let's see, let's start with some dark line. This isn't, I mean, I don't always start this way. I, every day it's different. And frankly, half the time I'm like on my first sip of coffee. So I'm, I'm like pre-verbal. <laughs> So anyway, is that so before meditating or after meditating? Before meditating. I meditate okay. then afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Um, because okay, so um, let's... people don't know that Mariah has a very, as you can probably see, she's very type A and she has this like rhythm of waking up and doing her dailies and then meditating. And um, I have learned so much from her, you know, her dailies, how she works and how it really, I think that the combination of the two has made you just, you know, want to continue doing it because you're so focused and it brings you peace while doing it. Yes. And, and it also just feels like a great way to start the day and then it's done. You know, like anything, if you say to yourself like, oh, I'm going to exercise later, you know, I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go for a run this afternoon. You spend all day going, you know, 
but am I going to go for a run now? Okay, wait, no, I right. ate lunch. I don't want to go for a run. I'm going to go for a walk. Maybe I'll just go for a walk. Maybe I won't do it today. Maybe I'll say, like you agonize. Whereas if you just get up and do it, then it's done and you get to think like, oh, I made my painting today, you know? Do you usually so, use the same um, brush for your dailies or you, do you also change the brush? Um, these are the, all these brushes, they're mostly flat brushes, although okay. I do have these Egbert type brushes. Um, sometimes I just use a palette knife. Um, okay. so I might just, you know, cause it gives you a different kind of a feel, sort of a right. drag of the right. paint, you know? Um, and, um, I wouldn't ordinarily be talking while I'm doing this. Um, so who knows what's going to happen here? What's going to come out? Um, it's a great adventure. Um, but and that's the beauty I, of it, that it's right. an and automatic I, painting and it's a, you don't think you're just doing, and yeah. um, that is the best way, you know? Yeah. Is and that this, medium or is that um, No, white? this is white paint, um, titanium okay. white, which okay. I literally buy by the gallon. Yes. Um, I like Nova color paint. Um, yes. And this, yes. is a, this is this sort of flexible rubber, you know, um, sort of spatula type thing. Um, it, you, you can even use uh, things that you get, you know, from the kitchen store if you want um, to move the paint around. And I kind of like the drag here, you know, you're, now you're seeing the yes. history yes. underneath. Yes. Okay. And you're mixing so, the, you know, you're mixing what you have underneath. You're already having, you know, right. some sort of um, layers in there. And, right. and so, this also gives me this this edge gives me a little bit of um, a little bit of um, uh, uh, geometry. So now I have a little bit of a straighter edge here. Um, right. And so but maybe I don't want too much of that. So I might then switch um, back to the brush. Um, and if I'm ever if there there are times where I can't do it first thing in the morning for whatever reason. And I may wind up doing it in the studio, like if I have to get up really early to go do something or whatever. Right, um, right. And then I'll use bigger brushes, like big wide house painting brushes, and that's kind of fun too. So like the ones I did, my dailies that I do in when I'm on retreats and stuff are usually I'm just doing in the studio as I'm doing a bigger painting. And that's got right. a kind of a different energy because it's a bigger brush. Right. But this is mainly what it is, you know. And then you can just kind of, I don't know. So anyway, this is this is the idea. Um, right. Love and it. Again, Thank you for showing us that. That is, yeah, that and, is and we, awesome. We're, we could almost be done here if you wanted. I mean, I wouldn't call this done, but like if you wanted to be done. And how long have I been doing this? Like three minutes ish? Yeah. You know? Not even. So yep. it, it, it's very, it's low, it's low stakes. And if you have, have you have you thought what you're gonna do with all your dailies? Have you thought of well, I, I, they're, they're, they, they live on Instagram. I mean, I post almost every day. Sometimes I skip a day and I don't like to post more than one thing a day. So I'll just, I'll, that day gets skipped for whatever reason. Cause I wasn't online or something like that. Right. right. Um, I've, I've sold a lot of them. So they get, a, a, if somebody, sometimes people see one and they go, Oh my God, I love it. And then I can get them framed and, um, and I float it in awesome. because acrylic, I can yeah. float it in a, uh, either a silver frame or, and, and it's fun. Sometimes people pick things like, oh, that's my wedding anniversary or, oh, that's, you know, <laughs> it's a, that, that day I got some, you know, I have a friend who got some great news on one of the days and she really loved the painting. And so she was like, um, she, she bought that one, which was really, it's, that's great. That's and great. So, you know, it was for a long time. I thought I wasn't going to, um, I wasn't going to break up the collection, but you know, this is this is I, this is from January, I and mean, this is only four months. And then if you multiply this by fourteen, that is, yeah, no, I can't it's even. Too many. <laughs> like, and, and to put them all up someplace is too much. Yes, <laughs> yes, you need a museum or a gallery that gives you the space. So let's get Mariah. Or even just maybe more. like a slideshow or something. But right. even if you were right. to do a second of painting, right, the slideshow right. would take you six minutes to go through. So let's that. move to the boxes now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to, Eloise, you're going to come over here and I'm going to show you the box system, which is, okay. So these boxes are like, they are my lifesaver. Yeah. Okay. So these are, um, so these boxes are, um, they're, uh, bead boxes or boxes that you use for, um, uh, like t screws or nails or something. You can get them at Home Depot. Lowe's, you can get them um, at Amazon. You can get them. Right. There's so many places that can store. Place, these ones come from a place called Tap Plastics, which um, I sent you the link for that. Um, they're really good quality and they have a good closure, um, which is which is nice because that keeps the paint fresher. Although if you're working all the time, you don't have to worry about it drying out. Um, right. So you except, don't put any medium on them or anything or water no, or anything, no. right? There was a time when I used to spray them and put paper towels, but then they would get moldy and whatever. I just, 
I figure that the pain that dries out that I lose is less than the amount of pain I would lose if I were squeezing it out every day and then not right. using it or doing or worse, I think worse is using up the paint you, you have because you, it's there and then screwing something up that you've been working on. Because so you're like, let's oh, talk about who told um, you the yeah. idea. So then you told me the idea. Yeah. <laughs> so this is all cool tones. So blues and greens, paints gray, um, you know, um, and uh, yeah, uh, blues, greens, paints gray, Prussian blue and all of that. And then um, this is the warm tones and earth tones. You can see I don't have a tremendous number of colors that I use. I mix almost everything from this. Um, right. I use right. a lot of the um, iron oxide, um, you know, uh, raw umber and um, like an indithrone blue and like a Payne's gray. And right. that's, you know, that's like, I could do a lot with that and white, a lot of white. And then yes. for me, yeah. my warmer tones, like the... Um, the uh, the reds and pinks and things like that it's just a tiny bit of pigment and it's mostly white or i just use a tiny bit i don't make a lot of paintings that are overall really hot right now for some so your reason. teacher was it really the one who said you know you must yeah. use this well she really encouraged it because yeah he felt like one of the big impediments to um to people making paintings, especially people who are new painters, is that paint is expensive and there's always that hesitation of like, I only want to squeeze out as much as I'm going to use, but how juicy is it to be able to take like a gigantic brush and just dip it into the paint and make a mark if you feel like it, rather than be like, oh, okay, I'm going to get out this, I'm going to pour it out, and I'm going to get it on my brush. It's just ready for you to use, and you have all the options right there for you. Spontaneous, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I can have a, I have a double-sided um, palette here. It's, I mean, two pieces of 18 by 24. So this is 48 inches uh, long and um, 18 inches tall, and I can right. do all my right here and these are disposable papers so if my palette gets really messy or i start it started getting really gray or muddy i can just rip off the paper and then i have fresh white again so, right. so right. that's helpful too um to yeah. keep, your, keep everything fresh you know if yes. you, have a, you yes. have to clean again another and you just what you do with this is um you use one brush per color then you leave it on your paper palette then you grab another another brush you yeah. use another, so you don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, you don't take the washing brush every time in between. In you just leave yeah. it there. You leave them fresh with the paint and it's all, you know, yeah. ready to go. So it's I a saw, really fantastic look. way to have everything just available and ready. And um, just, yeah. you know, it just helps so, so much. Yeah, uh, you can also use palette knife too. Like if you want to just grab a little bit of something and put it here, like just a little bit of red, you know, and then you're going to grab, you can just wipe it off and grab a little bit of yellow. And you can see uh, my, my colors have a little bit of, you know, there's white in some of them. And, right. You, and, and what happens, like we talked about this, you and I yesterday, yeah. um, I've had situations where my um, acrylics just dry out. And yeah. then, um, but we don't, we always use dry out paint, right? Yeah, so here, here you can see, for some reason, I'm not using this cadmium red medium very much or whatever this is. Maybe it's a parole red or something. I'm just not using it very much. But all I have to do is take a little medium like this and get it going. And here you can see, all of a sudden, now I have this, look at this crayon I've got. And you can even dip it into other paint and mix that way. So this is, you could make... Look, and what the marks if, that come from that, it's insane because... You never think to use that dry paint. And, well, and there is nothing that goes to waste in our studios. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah. And, and yes, exactly. Um, so, so, that's, so that's the box system. Um, yeah, let's move to your next yeah, you, table if you want. Yeah, okay. So should we go over to the drawing station? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, all right. So Eloise, do you want to walk around the other, other way? Go walk around. Okay. All right, so, um, oh, and one thing I thought I would just say really quickly um, is, 
you know, again, I'm all about removing impediments. So whether it's having all your paint, your paints in the box or whether it's having, you know, a setup that you can, you know, get going really quickly or something like that. I'm also fully in favor of the like clothes you can pull on over your clothes. So I, if I come to the studio dressed like this, which would actually be kind of a shocker because usually I'm in my like exercise clothes or something, I can just pull these on over my pants. You know what I mean? And be, yeah. and be protected. I so remember I those pants. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. These are like from Target. I got them a million years ago and I use them, you know, anyway, so that's, so that's good. So, so that's again, it, within 15 seconds, I, my clothes. You're ready to go. Yeah. Cause if I had to come in and like, oh, I got to take off my clothes and put on my other clothes again, I'm lazy. I'd be like, maybe I'll just stay home and watch Netflix yep. or something. A lot of people do that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah exactly. it's a great, it's a great tip. So, so thank and I you so much. Have, always have an apron that I wear and then I yep. can put um, you know, my music in here with my headphones, or I can put um, extra markers, you know, um, or um, drawing tools in here, um, right, you know, extra, you know, uh, like a, pe a rag, something like that. So right, I have, right, like, right, right, right. I can just you grab. just make everything just easy. I mean, I, I have my own apron here, too. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's just fast, easy, you don't worry about anything, you just go. So right. Um, so show us your drawing table. Okay, so um, so one of the things um, that I've started doing recently is working in, um, or I guess in the past year, is really working in sketchbooks um, as a place, again, like this idea generation factory, almost kind of like the, the big drawing we saw on the wall over there. Right, right. Um, my sister, my dear sister Rachel, gave me this um, as a gift last summer, at the beginning of the summer, and it's a book called. Uh, it was a book called Sketchbook with Voices, and it's basically a sketchbook that has prompts um, from contemporary artists. It came out in the '80s, so some of the prompts are uh, a little dated, shall we say? But the but there's some really good um, good questions that are asked, and so I decided I was just going to sort of respond to each. Um, prompt as I as I felt so yeah look at this, look at that. Look at this one. So, so this one I, I took it sort of literally it's it the, the prompt was paint ethereal things like weather conditions paint ice turning to steam okay so this is the this is the painting that I or the drawing slash painting that I made in sort of response to it well yeah, sometimes, sometimes the prompt is not anything that interested me so I just sort of transformed the page you know what I mean I covered so just it, like right? like covered it and just did whatever felt good for that day exactly whatever felt good for that day and then and then other times um let's see this was the most recent one uh this was a a, a prompt from richard Serra that i i really liked it says work comes out of work which i think is such a um exactly what we're powerful here yep. you know this yep. idea that we are working like that you just keep making work and you yes. keep working and then 100 work, and then it, it sort of keeps generating that way okay. I, I mean i can't wait when i come over and to your studio and i can yes. spend the hours looking at that book because it is so interesting and enticing and different and cool and, this is the and year, it's just right so yes, it's so just, 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 you know, yeah, this, even I every mean, day, visually, just, it's like a candy for me. It's like, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. I well, really again, love that. It's thank so you. great. Thank you. And again, what I'll say is I might never, ever think this may not be a large scale painting that I would feel comfortable right. putting forward, but I, it's very satisfying as a little drawing in this book. It's extremely of, satisfying. So it gives me, it gives me the confidence. And it's in, in right. contained. It's in one book. So... Yeah. Yes. The idea of getting like a sketchbook or something that will hold all your, you yeah. know, all your creativity versus, you know, it's just a different way of going about it. You know, it's right. like your own personal journey. Yeah. So, so when I was in um, North Carolina, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to be working for, you know, a full week here and um, I'm going to try to fill one of these books. And these are from Arteza and it's, it's just a watercolor sketchbook has nothing in it. No lines, no. Remember, I'm going to put everything down um, yeah. for you guys. All the supplies will be listed. So yeah. don't worry. Okay. So this is an empty one and it comes with this rubber band around it if you want. And so here's, you know, this is a good place to, to start. They're not that expensive. You, you have the one that you made for yes. the week? Yep. 
Yep. And here's the one I made for the week. So I took my artist statement. We have to do a mission statement or um, the mission statement. I, I collaged the front cover with my mission statement. And yeah. then I just started um, making these little collages and draw. This is um, tissue paper and chalk. Um, this is, uh, Did you have to spray the chalk so it doesn't, what, what do you do to like, I was um, using hairspray because somebody at, in North Carolina told me that that was a good thing. So I just used the hairspray. So I don't oh. know if that's rival. You probably do need to spray. And I don't work with a lot of dry crumbling materials because I don't love the spraying. Most yeah, of the, the most either. of what I use, I can seal, I can seal with, um, like a, some kind of a, uh, workable medium. fixative. Yeah, exactly. And then it, it may get darker and it may drag it a little bit, but then I know yeah. it's firm. Yeah, place. I, but I, I like the workable fixative because you can still yeah. work on top of it. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, it's easier, I think, um, yeah. than something that it's just permanent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then I just kept going with these. There's like little bits of drawing and, um, you know, collage again. Um Let's see if I can find some other things in here. Oh, at one point I decided I was just going to, um, punch holes into, you know, the paper. Uh, <laughs> like, okay, let's just get a texture. Let's see what happens if we just punch holes into the paper. You yeah. Know, I mean, again, stuff that you, you wouldn't necessarily I do. I absolutely love this. I think that for all of our viewers, oh, look at that. It's just, I respond so much to, you know, that kind of palette because sometimes I use it myself. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that palette I use a lot. And yeah. Uh, yeah. so I'm super drawn to that. And I just love the mark making that you're doing. Um, yeah. It's like I said, I feel like it's almost like a dictionary. And I feel yeah. like it's almost like um, a place for you to go back and see what worked and what didn't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That and will inform and you yeah. for your other people. Low risk, low risk. No risk. No you know, risk. you don't need, don't, don't get, don't get worried about whether or not it's working or it's any Absolutely. Good. Do it, Absolutely. Right? I mean, yes. This is bizarre, right? I just took newsprint and started to collage it into this. But look kind at, of look at that. Okay, so shape. let's stop there for a minute. Yeah. So that has mark making, geometric, a language, a community of, um, you know, elements that are speaking with each other. It takes yeah. you from one point to the next. It gives you direction um, from up to down to horizontal. Um, so it gives you, you know, like some sort of like a restful, peaceful thing. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it has a push and a pull. Yeah. And that and minimal is what color. we always strive for in a painting. To be able to have those elements, yeah. you just created it right there. Well, and it was no color, really. I mean, it's totally right. minimal. Right, but so look at it's it. Like it you gives take something you a out of the equation. language yeah. that you probably didn't, you know, you probably didn't think while you were doing it, but look at it now. If you really think of with your brain and not with your heart, yeah. that is, for me, is like the perfect, I, we don't call it the perfect painting, but it has the elements of all the drawings that we always talk about and that, are, you know, are good, friend and mentor teacher, yeah. um, Steve Amoney, always talks about, you know, how we can have a composition that speaks to each other, that has a language in itself, that has balance, and it has, you know, and, and just the color value here is, is just beautiful. So I, I love that. Yeah. And so let's, uh, let's see. Oh, here's, this is a particular favorite of mine. I liked, I liked how that one came out. Anyway, so this is so this was fun to do. It was like a fun yes. side. So I'm gonna turn on the comments right now. Yeah. Um, okay. For people yeah. to so let's get talking. Ask and maybe, me, what, um, maybe so we'll... if you have any questions, this is the oh. time um, yeah. to ask the questions for Mariah. So let's just Eloise keep going. Eloise is panning through my little tissue paper collection. I have it organized kind of by general colors because I do use this bleeding tissue in places. So I have this all back here. Right. And then there's some other supplies, Eloise. I want you to come take a look at. Um, these are called, these are super crayons. Um, they're like, um, here I can show you. They make this kind of juicy mark, kind of like the mark that we were getting from using that dried up paint blob. Um, and these are super cheap, you know, like one, a whole package of these, 36 is like 20 bucks. And so, you, you know, that's the kind of thing that can make a line like that. Um, 
the more do you sensitive. have to do you have to um i'm sorry do you use anything to uh make sure that you yeah, um you have to seal it and it will yeah. it's water soluble so it'll move so you kind of it's 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 not great but it's a really good thing to use experimentally the better yes. one to use um for per more permanent because it will actually dry are these whole bean maxon chalk markers and i got introduced to these by krista harris who's going to be on your interview yeah, segment she's, coming she's up. On Wednesday. so amazing and such a generous and gifted teacher but anyway she told me about these chalk markers um and um these <clears throat> also make kind of it and, and i'm, I'm I, this is palette paper so it's going to look a little but you see how it's this creamy line. Oh, it's delicious. I have it's them delicious, and I right. love using them. I know. Them. So you can what, get them. What uh, brand is yeah. the, crayon, the crayon maker? That you They're just us. called Super Crayon Gel Crayons. And I sent you a link to the, you can get them on Amazon. If you just put in okay. Super so Crayon. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post everything, you guys. So don't worry. We're going to post yep. all the materials so yep. you can experiment and have fun. Yeah. The other thing I like to do sometimes, too, is use these golden fluids, these liquids. I love uh, those. Yeah. And, and I roll it out, um, like, almost uh, with a brayer, you know, and use that um, to make some, um, you know, to, like, do it on a sheet of paper or even on the canvas to get right. kind of this overall feel. Um, yes. I think if I have an example somewhere nearby. But basically, it's kind of a different coverage than say um the coverage you would get with um with just a brush you know what i mean it, right. it gives, it's a very right. thin almost more like a mono print kind of printmaking type feel so again another way to get good coverage but maybe a little bit of transparency behind and another tool that you can just grab and use oh my god oh mariah thank you so much you've given us so much food for the soul and i i can't <laughs> wait you. to like seriously go in it myself and you inspire me to do dailies and you inspire me to maybe start maybe my own journal and and see where yeah. it takes me and please tell us where can we find you where can we find your your work so i met mariah burtis at mariah burtis on instagram my website is mariahburtis.com again it looks like maria but mariah you know m-a-r-i-a-u-r-t-s.com yep. Um, I have two galleries in the Bay Area. One is called Slate Contemporary. It's in Oakland. The other is Simon Breitbart Fine Arts. I'm on their website. You can see work there that they are promoting. And, um, and check, just check my website. I have every daily, all 5,347 of them are on my website, which yes, look through all of them because you will be there for a long time. But anyway, they're all there. So you can see the whole collection. Um, and it's been quite a, you know, a, a, a transformation from the beginning to now, I think. So you could see the progress and the different ideas and how, you know, how that's been developed over time. Yes. Um, so that's yeah. where you find me. Um, or, um, you know, if you have any questions or if you want to reach out to me, you can direct message through Instagram and I'm happy to um, you know, answer anything there. And um, I just appreciate this opportunity, Sandra. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I am so excited about this. Uh, everyone loves your work. And, um, and I can't thank you enough for coming into this journey and helping, um, you know, Feeding America. That's where we decided that our money is going to go. Each one of our artists is uh, contributing an original uh, 10 by 10 piece of art and we're selling that as a collection so I will be getting my collection from April pretty soon and we'll be okay. selling that and we'll make a lot of money for food shelters and feeding America and then so we'll great. have yeah. um, an incredible lineup for May um, so please make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Saturday at noon our next uh artist and teacher is Krista Harris and she's gonna be amazing and um, hopefully I am able to give you all a peek into uh, the artist studios where you can see how they work and how everyone is sharing, um, you know, just learning right now for, for people actually to learn at home. And so each one of you is bringing something unique and different to the table and each one of you is teaching us something new. So I'm learning, everyone else is learning, so I just, I, I can't thank you enough for everything. And I'll thank see you on you Wednesday. Dance. All right, Mariah. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, All Louise, righty. for helping us out. Yeah. I know. Thank you, Eloise. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.